Hi, I'm Katrin. Welcome to my channel. My passion is storytelling and that is what you find on my channel. I do the overall story of Margit Sandemus book series The Legend of the Ice People. It's a fantastic family saga which extends over several centuries. That is what I'm going to look into in my video today. Every book in this story stands on its own. You can come into the story anytime. So far we have followed Sul's journey from the Lindale to Copenhagen in Denmark. Lord Dog met up with her. She is going to stay with him during her time in Denmark. She is twenty years now. She have Hannah's bag in her possession again. Life is good for our Sul. When I left Sul and Dog in my last video, they were talking about Sul's love life. She told him that she was afraid that she will never fall in love. I compare all men I meet to Tengel. No one resembles him at all. It's not that I'm in love with him, no more how he is as a man. Strong, kind and powerful. No man that I have met is even close to how he is. Tengel is not strong. It is Silius' love to him that make him strong. Yes, you are right, and it is his love for her who makes her strong. I consider ourselves lucky to have grown up in such a loving home. Sul, it's not Tengel's goodness you seek. I'm sure about that. You are looking for a man who has the same authority and with the same demonic traits as him. Yes, I think you are right, said Sul, a bit sad. Now we are here. We are at home now. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful house. It looks very elegant. Above the gate at the entrance were a beautiful decoration in blue and gold. My landlord and his family are wonderful people. You will get a room for yourself while you stay here. But you come here in a sad time. They have just lost their son. Is he dead? No, he is lost. He have been gone for three days. Oh! So awful, it's almost worse when you don't know what happened. Yes, the uncertainty, the mother have almost lost her mind. They are searching in the river as we speak. But they have not found any trace of him yet. They suspect that someone have kidnapped him. They could not talk more about it. They were now inside the house. Sol could see that Dog was not exaggerating. The lady of the house was shaking all over, and her hands were shaking too, and her eyes was red from crying. Dog presented them with a calm and moderate tone. This is my foster sister, Sol Angelica, and this is my landlord, Count and Countess Strattelheim. Your sister is lovely, said the count as he took Sul's hand, and Sul bent the knee in front of him. Have you seen Henriette? Look at her eyes. Have you ever seen such a yellow-amber colored eyes before? His wife was exhausted and could only smile and nod a little to Sul. Sul looked at the countess' dress. The lace collar on the dress was large. And under the skirt, she must have hip pads fitting around her hips. Dog, show your sister to her room, and we can see you back here in a little while. We have lunch then. You must excuse my wife. She needs to rest. Everything that have happened in the last few days have taken all her strength. I understand, said Sol. Suddenly she feels an unusual and strong feeling affect her. A certainty that excited her immeasurably, 
and made her terribly impatient. When Lady Contest left the room, Sewell said, I could probably find your child. Sewell, said Dog warningly. The Count interrupted Dog. He looked at Sewell and said, How can you be of any help, young lady? I know, Dog, I should not say anything, but I have to, and it's urgent. What are you talking about? You need to know, said Dog. This can be extremely dangerous for my sister. You need to know that. I do not hesitate at all about the possibility that she might be helpful in the search for your son. But it could mean my sister lose her life. It all depends on how discreet you can be. Dog looked at him when he said it. Explain it to me, said the Count. You have seen my sister's eyes. If she says it's urgent, it means that your child is still alive, but we need to hurry. Sewell waited for your wife to leave the room before she mentioned anything. That's because your wife probably wouldn't be able to keep it a secret. My child means everything to me. Can you swear that you will not tell anyone what you will see now? I swear. Good. Pick up something that belongs to your son, something that has not been washed. I cannot promise that I will find him, but I can promise to do my best to find him. I beg you, do not give up too easily. I will thank you on my bare knees. So I can be sure that you are discreet. I think I know what you mean, how you would be hurt if someone found it out. It might feel better if you find out that my wife has asked me if I can find a wise woman who can help us with the search. But I do not know where I can find such a wise woman, so it became difficult. The Count looked at Dog. You have not talked about your sister's skills? No, it's not something you talk about. Now, of course, I can understand that. The Count left the room to find something for Sewell. You should not have done this. Why not? Of course, I think you're doing the right thing by helping, but it's dangerous. This man is more powerful than you think. What do you mean? Who is he? He is a judge. He is one of the most powerful lawmen in Denmark. Oh, oh. Sewell put her hands over her mouth. This could have gone all wrong. No wonder he doesn't know any wise woman. He have sent them the all to die. That's why I told you to keep quiet. But I couldn't help it. It fear, I feel the child, and the child needs help at once. Let's hope you found the boy. Sewell can hear Dog's voice shaking in fear for her. The Count came back. Here, this is a toy that he used to have when he fall asleep. Everything else had been washed. Sewell took the toy. Can I sit down for a while? Oh, of course, I'm sorry for my bad manners. She sat there for a long time with the toy against her cheek. Then she whispered, Darkness. It's cold and it's not a big place. He is asleep or if he's unconscious. The anxiety I feel is from before. You can see what the Count was thinking. Oh, my God, everything is so strange. This woman's give me hope. The woman he showed in prison and sentenced to death. But I am a father at first, he thought. His profession must come second. He had a bad conscience for all the women who have received the death sentence, women who perform 
such a thing. Sol kept on talking mostly to herself. He has blonde hair. He is about one to two years old, more likely two. He was wearing velvet, purple velvet, with a broad lace collar. The count looked at Dog in surprise. I did not say anything about it to her. Dog could see that gave him a great hope. Sol enjoyed using her gift to the fullest, but she was worried. She clearly felt the urgency. Where is he? I don't know. Sol had no lost all her dignity and manners. She went completely on emotions now. Have anyone abducted him? No, I do not feel any evil deeds or thoughts. Keep quiet now. The Count was accustomed to the way people were and was not offended by her way of speaking to him. Dog was both proud and impressed with her work. He had lived beside her and Tingle's powers for years, but he had never seen them at work this way before. He was still worried what would happen to her when this was all over. I can see a window. Has he been locked up somewhere? No, the window is on the inside. He must have locked himself out. And now he cannot unlock it. Is he here in the house? No, I'm not feeling that he is close, but he cannot be too far away. Where exactly did you last see him? Uh, I was in the office with Dog. We uh, had homework. My wife had friends over for tea, the nanny was upstairs and cleaned his room, and, and the boy sat in the same room as my wife and played with his toys. And when the nanny came down, he was gone. How long may it have been since the boy was last seen? At most fifteen minutes. He is a calm boy, you... You do not hear much from him. Please, find him for me. Sol nodded. Where was he sitting? The Count showed her where the boy had been, just beside the fireplace. Sol went there. She sat down and put her hands on the floor. She looked puzzled. Something has happened and you have forgotten about it. It's not possible. We have gone through everything over and over again. Can he open doors? No, he cannot. The doors inside the house is always open. The doors out is always closed. That's why we think someone came in and took him. I feel something here. Do you have a dog? Yes, we have an Ulmer dog. Ulmerdag is the old Swedish name for Great Dane. Can it open doors? Yes, he can open the one that leads out to the garden, but uh, it was closed when he disappeared. Dog went into the room next door. It was there the ladies sat and drank their tea. The door to the garden was placed so you could not see it from the table they were sitting at. He walked to the door, uh, but the dog was outside. He was tied up outside. Was he tied up in the garden? Yes, around the corner at the kitchen garden. Was it you who tied him up? Uh, no, it was one of the servants who did it, uh, but I don't know which of them. So you never asked about it when you investigated everything about the disappearance? No, we didn't talk about the dog because he was tied up outside. All three of them looked at the door which led out to the garden. Dog pretend to be a dog. He put his hands up and if there were paws on the door and let them slide down over the handle and the door open. The door opened up and then slowly, slowly closed and did not make a sound when it did. 
but the dog was tied up outside. That's what you remember, but think if he was tied up after the boy disappeared. I will shake it up immediately, said the Count. Don't waste your time on that now. The important thing is that I can feel the dog's involvement in this. Let's go out to the garden. The garden was not big and it was fenced. On the left side they had the neighbor's house. And opposite was a dense hedge. And on the right was an outbuilding bordering the neighbor's garden. The dog was happy to see them. Dog approached it and patted it. Sol went through the outbuildings. One apart was a hen house, and in the other there were a pig. We've already looked through them. He is not there. Sol went to the hedge. She lay down to see if it was possible to crawl through. Your clothes, they will get dirty. I don't care. Sol was irritated. We have to look. All three were now lying on the ground, trying to find a place to get through. He cannot have come through here. It's way too tight. He could, said Sol. She backed out of the hedge, and in her hand she had a tuft of light hair. He crawled through here. When he saw the light hair, the Count shouted out the boy's name. Oh, Albrecht! This is the first trace of him. What is on the other side of the hedge? Uh, it's the backyard of a store. What day was it when he disappeared? Uh, it was a Sunday, but we have searched through there as well. Even the city soldier have searched the place. Sol sat up. Her hair was messy and both she and her clothes was dirty. Even so, she looked so pretty. He crawled through here, I'm sure. I can put my honor and soul on it. You are not afraid of losing your soul, dog thought. Uh, can you feel anything more? What it looks like where he is? Mm, I cannot see the surroundings, but I, I can smell an odor that I recognize, but... I cannot put, put my finger on it. What kind of place has a window on the inside of the door? I know such places. No, said Sol. It's not the secret house. It's more like a passage between two rooms. I remember feeling something big and black next to him. Um, it's something big and this may sound strange, but I will think about Thumb screws. They are not like that, but something like that. Sunday, said Dog. He may have cried for a long time without anyone hearing it. We have to get through here. We don't have to do that. We can walk around. Sul, you look terrible. Count Strattelhem heard him, and both him and Dog helped her, and brush off their own clothes too. I think that we stop here for today. You can say what you want about Sol, but she have the biggest of heart. She is reckless and not afraid to use her power. I'm sure that she will find this boy. The question is, will he be alive? And will the Count hold his promise to her? Next on my channel I will continue with my Sansa Stark video. When I left her in my last video, they have accused Littlefinger for murder and treason. After that I will look into the life of Morgan Jones. He is another character that I think is interesting to follow. He started his journey in The Walking Dead and from that he went over to fear The Walking Dead. In my next video he still thinks back to the time he spent with Eastman and his goat. It's just about three weeks until we have the season premiere on season six of Fear. It will air October 11. 
during season five. I did my episodes breakdown. I hope to have time to do that during season six too. Some of my videos are published for a long time. Others are removed quite quickly. If you don't want to miss anything or if you just want to support my channel, subscribe and click on the notification bell. I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you so much for stopping by. Stay safe out there and welcome back.